Hello and welcome back everybody, Heir of Carthage here, and yes, we are back in Total War Warhammer 3, and we are going to be fighting those sweet, sweet errantry wars for Bordalo. So I hope you all are ready for some more chivalric action. Um, so. We're going to be finishing off Impossible. Wolfheart's faction no. here very soon, and I wouldn't be surprised if I call him Wolfric about ten more times. Now, during this episode... I do not have any new comments from you all to read because I'm actually recording part 4 and 5 um, back to back before I've released them. I actually had part 4 recorded and was ready to release it for what would have been Saturday, uh, my time on the, what is that, Saturday the 15th. Um, but um, I had a friend get stuck at an airport and I was kind of waiting on standby to go help him out. And I didn't get a chance to upload it, even though I had it recorded. So, ultimately, that ended up getting a little bit delayed. Look who's back. Wolfheart is back for yet another beating. And who am I to deny him said beating? We will not deny it. In fact, we will supply it. Alright, so here we are, ready to crush another of Wolfheart's large armies. This one has even fewer halberds than the last one, so... They are in big, big trouble. Let's check the map, though. To make sure I'm not about to step in. And, okay, it is a settlement battle, so I'm going to encircle them. And try and get them to come out and fight me. Now, we could probably beat them in the settlement, but let's let's see if they are willing to step out and, and come play on an open battlefield. Otherwise, they'll suffer attrition. Now, we have some buildings, no doubt, that we can take care of. So, floating pyramid. Let's, let's do an upgrade there and here. Jungles of the Green Mist. Um, we could go up to a tier 3 settlement there. Um, but I'm going to actually... Let's do the defenses here first. And then, since we don't have any trade goods... Let's do this windmill there. Alright, so that should be a good spend of our money. We are making good money. And we can certainly kind of pump up that second army just as soon as I unlock lower uh, um, upkeep for the knight units. Um, which I think will happen after we've gained 5 ranks... Um, with that character. Alright, so Wolfheart is going to immediately come out and attack us. That's fine, though. Like I said, we're going to get him on open ground. And a lot of his power bar is going to be handed out by all these skirmishers, but those skirmishers are going to get absolutely shellacked. Um, he does have these heroes, which are probably buffing up his power bar as well. So, here we go. It is time for us to go crush Wolf... Ah, oh, man, he's deployed way back here in the woods. That's actually somewhat annoying. Um... He's got reinforcements coming, but he got to immediately deploy with the entire garrison force, so he's going to be fairly strong. Yeah, it, it was definitely smart for him to deploy in the woods. It's also annoying. It's going to be the... So I'm actually, even though he's going to get even more reinforcements, they can only have 40 units in the battlefield. I don't know if they'll have that or not, but I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And I'm going to need my infantry much closer to support range before I engage all my cavalry head-to-head -head with that much infantry. Uh, the infantry support does become pretty important at, at times. Alright, so I do have my healer with us. I don't have any healing spells at the moment, but we can use Awakening of the Wood to soften up enemies just a little bit. Let's go get some eyes on over here. I'm going to just kind of come cruising forward. And I'm going to also cruise my cavalry right in here. I'm going to put a charge on, and then I'll probably cycle charge with the cavalry. But hopefully I'll get some spotting done. Okay, there comes the reinforcements. They did come right onto the battlefield, so they must not have had 40 units yet. Hopefully we'll catch the AI kind of reforming here. I'm going to land right in the middle of this and see if we can cause a bit of a mess up here. Alright, we got a really solid charge off on these front units. I'm going to let that charge sink in for just a second, and then I'm going to recall all those riders, because my infantry... Yep, there we go. So I'm going to call the riders back out. There we go, and here comes my infantry... And then I'm going to do another cycle charge, so as soon as these cavalry retreat back just a little... 
We gotta get separated from those spearmen. We do have a bit of a break already right here in the middle, so I'm gonna come right back in for another cycle charge here. AI is not gonna be able to withstand these cycle charges. They're gonna lose lots of units on these cycle charges. I'm gonna try and fix these halberds over here and crush them real quick. In fact, I'm gonna get my two leaders. They were, actually my leaders are doing a great job of kind of just keeping the uh, the enemy um, missiles busy over there. Okay, let's do another big cycle charge. So group two, pull back. I don't have enough infantry over here, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to pull all my. I need my squires to keep fighting there. So group two, just kind of pull back over here. We're gonna cycle again. We are gaining ground. It may not look like it, but we're we're doing okay here. And like I said, we've got all these skirmishers busy. Oh, I forgot my damsel ended up right in the middle of a big fight. That is not what I wanted. actually get our damsel back here. Okay, we wrapped up this flank. That was something that I wanted done. Let's do another cycle charge here. I actually need to kind of just get these horses away over here because all those spears and stuff are just a waste of my time right now. I'm going to put these guys on skirmish and tell them to shoot at those spears. And then otherwise, I'm going to come swinging in this direction. Actually, there's an Empire Knight over here. Let's crush that. What do I got right here? A Knight's Errant? Let's take that Knight's Errant and start pushing back here into all these skirmishers. If we want to kill the enemy power bar, we just need to go back here and crush these skirmishers. And then we'll deal with their leaders with our infantry. So like right here I got a Foot Squire. That's what we're going to want to get Wolfheart with. But yeah, once we crush all these skirmishers in the back, you're going to see the, uh, the power bar start to subside rather significantly. I need this unit to get out of there. Need to come around here and let's put in a big awakening of the wood right there. Power of the lady. Trying to get my questing knights out of that. Alright, did we get rid of. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Awesome. Alright, let's get back here and continue crushing skirmishers. We are taking some losses, but we're also just utterly annihilating. Um, all these skirmishers back here, so that's going to swing the battle in our favor very quickly here because the power bar is going to massively shift here as soon as all these units route and push off the battlefield. Because skirmishers make a big, big difference. Um, let's see here. Let's keep dropping these Awakening in the Wood should help. Okay, where are we at? It's hard to see all of our units. The AI may not fully break, unfortunately. I'm gonna come after the Kalara over there, and then where's my leader? Let's, okay, we routed Wolfheart, so that's gonna swing things. Yeah, we're seeing a chain route now. There we go. Got it done. Alright, um, that was a pretty solid victory there. Um, I'm going to take the replenishment because we're probably going to have to fight another battle um, since they were in the settlement and sallied out. They won't technically be dead yet because we didn't really just kill every last one of them. But a, a very solid victory for us. On open ground, Wolfheart has no prayer um, of winning uh, against these types of forces unless he just has a tremendous number of halberds and something like war wagons that can hide behind them and continually shoot me. Or like a whole bunch of huntsmen, um, those would be quite Save effective. Them. Huntsmen, I believe that's what I'm talking about. Like the uh, the archers that are anti-large, uh, that would be another excellent unit for him. So we can finish off Wolfheart, Kalara, and let's see, Hurtwig and Jorek. All of them gonna get knocked out here. Wounded. I'm sure the AI will have them back after like one turn. <laughs> But our plan is still very much going according, uh, accordingly.
We do have a potion of toughness now. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to put that on Sir Scribe because that potion of toughness will help him more, I think, because Albrecht's going to be stronger right now. We picked up a Gambler's Armor too, so let's stick that on him. Uh, and then we got this Obsidian Trinket. Not going to be anything fancy, but it'll work. And then over here on no our uh, healer, we're going to put this Charmed Shield on, so that'll be better than nothing. Not much nice. better than nothing, but it will be better than nothing. Uh, we can now unlock Life Bloom and Earth Blood as well. So every time we cast an Awakening of the Wood, there'll be a little bit of healing Do you know for all troops. And then for Patchy Le Paladin. Um, I'm probably just going to finish work on Deadly Blade. Then for Albrecht, we were working on his personal skill tree as well. And we were researching the Confederation tech with the other Bretonian factions, so we better stack up some cash here. Um, for a few turns, you know and then we tricked these guys into getting Fall close to us. They now shouldn't be able to flee outside of my attack range. The lady so now we've it. caught and destroyed this Wolfheart army. It says we're going to take medium casualties. I, I find that a little bit hard to believe, but I don't really care, I guess. Because we're not going to really be on the front line there. So we took them out, and that's going to help Valiant gain some skill Lord. points for these characters who need them to level up. We're going to go ahead and go with Earthblood and then Life Bloom. Protector of the realm. Awesome. Excellent. So we are in very good shape here. Is that... Uh, Roderick? Yeah, I was wondering where Roderick was because he wasn't in that last battle. Uh, we just have one settlement left here for Wolfric, and that is the Monument of Izatal. Once we're rid of him, our next target should be these Druki down here. Um, and then if we can get our second army stood up, we should go help against... The, um, in fact, I might send my main army up to the coast and send my second army to guard against the Druki over here. Um, with the Druki the come, it you. could get tough, depending on what they bring. They have a lot of anti-armor capability. Very dangerous faction, um, if used properly. I'm going to get rid of this building here because we just don't need it, and I don't want that one. Because I'd like the extra wood resources. Uh, I will go ahead and spend just... I don't want to spend it because in case we get the... Uh, Confederation thing, want to make sure we have more than enough there. So let's actually, like I said, I'm going to save some cash for a few turns here. All right, because we're about to finish yet another Confederation tech. Okay. Man, I, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous right now. Some of you might be like, Air, why? You're absolutely trucking your enemies. Well, here's why. I made a plan, and right now everything is going exactly according to plan. So something just feels wrong here. <laughs> I feel like the poo's about to hit the fan, because things have gone exactly the way that I hope at the moment, and that, that just doesn't happen, does it? Alright, let's go up to the Monument of Izatel. No waiting. No mercy. And we're gonna wipe out the rest of the Hunts Marshal's expedition. So good riddance. And they are no doubt very much in a solid first place on the Kill Scribe count right now. These guys are going to be way up there. Let's tear down these because those are in the wrong settlements. We've got tons of cash. I've been secured. Faction destroyed. And we finish the Heraldry of Baston. So again, I'm going to save at least 7,500 in cash for the end of this turn. We're gonna pick wisely here about what to upgrade. Loading Pyramid. High Sentinel, I'm excited to get upgraded because then we get the iron resource there too. I definitely want all the trade goods that we can get a hold of. Model. Let's go ahead and build defenses here because the Druki could come from that direction. And then over here, let's get the trade resource started. 1500. That's a little too much. Alright, let's wait. Um, to the next turn, because again, I want to save some cash. Well, actually, it would pop up on the beginning of the next turn, so I think we would be safe, actually, to go ahead and build that. So let's go ahead and take care of any skill points. So we'll get Foe Seeker. And then Blade Shield. Let's take a look at our vows to remind myself. Oh, we need to get a Grail Vow going here, so Pledge to Untaint. Defeat a Legendary Lord of the Chaos. Vampire counts are coast, so that would actually be a good one. We could head over to the coast and take care of that one. 
And then we never did get our pledge here for this damsel. Whoops. So we still got a lot of rank ups to get, so we can do this one. Let's get into the skills and drop our next two in Earth Blood. Awesome. Okay, we are looking to be in excellent shape here. Got our commandments in place. My reputation precedes me. Yeah, back in the settlement. Okay, we need to get that army built up because we do have enough money. And we need to be ready to face off against the Druki. Because Rakarth is very likely to attack us, as is the Vampire Coast. And we can get the lizards even more on our side so we can make that John Hammond dinosaur army come true. Um, if we get down and start taking out the Vampire Coast, because that's going to make the lizards very happy because they're fighting them. And in fact, we, like for instance here, could give some of these settlements over to Gorok, and that's likely to form, you know, a military alliance between us as well. So I think we're probably going to be looking at that as a plan. Still no opportunity to confederate. These, these factions that I'm trying to confederate may just be gone off the map. Um, and I, like I said, I'm trying to hurry down to Carcassonne because I really want the Fey Enchantress, and we obviously want Luan as well. Both of those factions are still intact. They're not super strong. In fact, one of them's already got two, only got two settlements. So we definitely want to get that confederation. Yeah, right now we're only three turns away from it. So if they can survive for three turns, then we should be in good shape. I'm going to head down here at full speed. Taking my leave. And where is my best recruiting at right now? Down here. Blessings of the lady be upon you. Head Unwell. down here. To build cover. Uh, let's go ahead and build that one. We should get some cash here on the turn in in case we get an opportunity to confederate with someone. All right. So I'm repositioning for the next wars. We've got this little corner of Lustria completely under our control. We got Mazda Mundi to our north. Speaking of which, um, we need to get on his good side to make sure we don't end up in a pointless war on that border. Um, so I think we should work on trying to improve relations with Mazda Mundi. So let's go see what we can do. Upkeep for infantry, leadership for infantry. Well, both of these kind of suck. It's for 10 turns. Better go with that one. Um... If the lady so, wills here we go. Very well, I go. Garrison that army there. How are we doing on the vows here, by the way? This guy is not going to have completed his vow. He's going to need skill points. Um, I guess we could run him right behind our other army. It'd be a little bit of a risk. The Pillars of the Unkeen Constellation is about to have good defenses, though. So if we can maybe build up the Wellsprings... And we want to, again, stay high on cash. But we could roll this army and hero. right in behind this one and try and quickly gain are? those skill points. Let's do that. Let's roll these two armies together. I will indulge you. Moving out. And then we can pick up the skill points that way. Like I said, we'll keep an eye on the Druki, but I do have... Decent defenses back here. Like, they're not amazing, but they're decent. So, let's end this one. And about to take the fight to the coast. I mean, Wolfheart's going to have a lot of kills. I think he's definitely going to be on top of Scribe's list for a little while. But depending on how many Vampire Coasts we run into, they could take over because they have huge unit sizes because of, like, the weak zombie-type units and stuff. So it's possible that they might take over the kill count. Uh, Rakarth has a decent little sized empire, so I'd say he is potentially a contender to get in there and start racking up kill count. Um, the coast is at war. So what we could do is join the war through... I don't have any agreement with the coast, do I? No. No, well, I mean, if it's Death Wish that you got, then you're the one that's going to be finding it, broski. Um, let's talk to these. Oh boy, they got a big army right on their doorstep. We can give them their territory back though, and that'll make them happy. I'm gonna go to join war. 
And I'm gonna offer to join the war against the Awakened. Oh, they're at war with a thousand Maws, too. And I'm just gonna join the war. This will just make them like me. It's gonna pick up allegiance points, stuff like that. So I'm gonna propose that offer. Well, actually, no, I'm not yet, because that big army is kinda in a, in a great position to hit Chakwa really hard. My strength and wisdom are yours. I'm trying to think what I want to do here. My reputation precedes me. I think I'm going to swing this Going army forward. around over here, and I'm going to swing this one towards Very the well, coast. If you insist. Okay, they, they've got an army over here sieging, and they left their home open. But yeah, if I declare war on the coast, i got to make sure that Chakwa is covered. We don't want to leave it. Out in the open like that. One turn left. We should get plenty to take care of any confederation with Carcassonne on the next turn. If it becomes available. I don't, sometimes it's like a turn or two delayed. We'll see exactly what goes on here. But we should be in a good position to go support Itza. And I want to build them up strong enough that they become a very valuable ally. And not only that, but they have places where I can build an outpost and get really good units. Like, I don't want them to just have one settlement. Uh, we, want to, we want to get them really well set up for success here. Yep, all right, so here we go. We can confederate with Carcassonne. I'm gonna go ahead and um, do this on the money track here, appease the lords. Um, our income just went way down, and it must be because of some huge upkeep. Carcassonne is probably fielding a ton of troops, even though they can't really afford it. So whatever we took over from them seems to have been minor in terms of income. And look at Castle Carcassonne over here with Skaven Plague and all kinds of great stuff. No need this building there. It is going to need defended. Let's see what kind of upkeep we're paying on some of these units. Yeah, these Knights of the Realm are absolutely killing us. Um, as are these Grail Knights. I don't have a war over here at the moment. My strength and wisdom this army is not going to be hurting me too bad. Let's get into Guardian Bordelow. Let's take a look at Bordelow. They're not taking advantage of the trade goods at Bordelow. Oh, we do get... The, yeah, we get the wine resource there, actually. So we're, we're good in that respect. It's not like a standard trade resource. Okay. So Aquitaine is where? Right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and put in a farm there to help us earn a little more money. I don't... Feel like feel like we need this building here at the moment. Let's tear that one down. We're low on money, so we need to cut these high upkeep units out of our army. And we don't want Skaven Plague. It's gonna go on for three more turns. We could settle Breon right here and pick up another trade resource. And then we can ditch these super high upkeep units. I, I kind of want to keep the Grail Guardian because it's really cool, but these two right here will save me a tremendous amount of upkeep. They can be replaced with, like, the Questing Knights are much more sensible upkeep. See how that, that did that there? Yes. And this army is not doing much for me at the moment, but, you know, maybe worth keeping an eye on. We have too many heroes here, Blessings and we could use one up there. So let's take one of these paladins, the bounce up here. We actually can't you remove him from the there at the moment. Um, I'm going to respect these characters. That's something I that I do. That's why I use this mod, because when I take them over from the AI, I want to be able to pick their skill points properly. I protect Bretonia. I like this lore master thing because it helps with more spells. Um, blessed water, charge. For, all right, so battle pilgrims get a buff in her army. That's good to know. So we might want to use them as the infantry. Thirty percent charge bonus. It's not bad. First off, let's make sure that her units are going to be potent because we're probably going to have. I, I'd like to have, yeah, Worshippers of the Grail, because Battle Pilgrims and the like. We're definitely going to want Lorf Lorfenial's progeny. We're definitely going to want to take advantage of some of the magic capabilities here. So let's do... Extra point in the Waking of the Wood. Shield of Thorns. 
Asian, and then we definitely want let's go with go with dwellers first. Okay, so we kind of fixed the money situation um, good enough for now. It could be better um, if we get rid of this Grail Guardian, but that is a nine chevron Grail Guardian and a very powerful unit. This field trebuchet is kind of useless for the most part. I'll hang on to it for a little while, but I'm probably not going to keep that. I, I mean, I'd rather be paying upkeep on a unit that's going to be better. Be I'm being honest. Okay. Let us be ready here. If Itza can just hold its own against this army, which they probably can, I can just cut in, like... They've got that one sieged. I can just cut straight over here to Tlax. And take this area over here. And then that would give me some more income and ports and stuff like that. Awesome. Now let's look into the unification of Bretonia. That's going to take a whole bunch more turns as well. So we're going to have to go through all these other factions. And I do have some chivalry that we could spend. And let's take over here. Control. And turn. All right. I want to get my money situation back up. And we should be able to continue to improve it here quickly. Bow before the right um, Eltharion. Sweet. Tell me you want a trade agreement. He does not. Can I counter that? We already have a trade. Okay. We already have a trade agreement. Um, you pick up a defensive alliance. And that would make a lot of sense. He's not prosecuting any wars that look really bad for me, so let's take up a defensive alliance and let's propose that offer to him. Our strength rank is quite high right now. We're all the way up at strength rank 9, which seems pretty high considering what I've got. Um, but hey, that's, that's good to hear. This is probably a war. Yep. He's going to declare war on us, but we have allies, too. Um, Evress is kind of near. I don't know if they'll really help, but this is a bit of a worry for me because now um, the Fey is going to have to be able to hold his army back. Okay. That means we need to do some recruiting in the Fey's army and in a hurry. But we don't want to go into that settlement because it's got Skaven Plague. So, I'm going to step across um, attrition in areas of chaos corruption? Really? Alright, whatever. Let's scoot across the bridge, I guess. I didn't know we were suffering chaos corruption. Oh, the, the plague is enabling attrition. Interesting. Is that a Nurgle plague? Yeah, it is. Okay, I thought it was a... I thought it was a Skaven plague. My bad. Um... We don't have a ton of money, and I'm going to need to use it to get ready to fight against Grom. I'm going to take this extra paladin and swing it up here. And then the Fae, I think, gets standard upkeep cost on questing knights. She does. So questing knights are going to be an important part of this army here. They're going to be expensive, but we need a good troop of questing knights to help us out here. And then these foot squires are also going to be necessary. So we're going to have to put together a decent... And I might actually keep this trebuchet against the green skins. It could be handy. Um, we don't need these mounted yeomen and stuff like that. But we're going to have to push our upkeep cost a little bit. Uh, so yeah, we're going to need to... Need to be careful here. Got trade goods here. we got a cinnabar mining pit. We should take advantage of that. I need defenses at Castle Carcassonne. It's it's very poorly defended at the moment, but I also don't really want to get rid of these buildings because they're really good. All right. Protector of the realm. We are just about in a position. Okay, yeah. It looks like Itza survived that attempt on them. Let's see. Yes. There's some Lord not move. Let's end our turn. Okay. Okay, we just got to be able to keep Grom at bay. Or not, I will strike. Excellent, we needed this. I forgot to go. In fact, we should go look for more um, trade deals. Because we could use that to prop up our income even further. We're going to have to keep an eye on Grom, though. Grom can be very strong. Yeah, he can be scary. Um, Alberic would do really good against Grom. The Fey Enchantress is not a, an, a big monster killer or anything. 
We got a lord over there, but he's only level one, so it's not really that big of a deal. Okay, we got our units, and it I didn't really hit our upkeep that hard. And we're already carrying, like, a better... Let's get rid of these. Not a yeoman. Yes. A couple of spearmen at arms is not going to hurt anything. I think I'm just going to stack a few more... These guys in here, so... Then this army will be able to kind of hold its own against the green skins. I will smite the foe. I shall so, share my greatness. Get the Cinnabar mining pits up and running, so that's gonna really help us from a income standpoint. Awesome. Okay, okay. Let's get to work. Um I can now join the war with Itza. This will earn us some allegiant points. So join the war against the Awakens. So that's going to earn me some allegiance. These lizards are pretty tough too, so that's good. There we go. They are happy for me to join the war. They're not really into a military alliance or anything like that. So but let's join the war. They'll come around. Um, so I'm going to propose this offer. And some of you might be like, Here, take the money from them. Eh, you know what? I will. I will. They're in a war and I don't want to bankrupt them. But you know what? That's their problem. I will steal some money from him. Yes. Alright, quick deals. Talzin wishes to trade. Let's look at what Why some of these... Tra the um, or sorry, of hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go to trade agreements. Champion. I am the heir of Anarion, and I bid you welcome. That's a really good trade agreement for them. It's okay for me. Let's exit that. Queen of and... Avalon. I will hear your words, but I make no promises. I am the defender yeah, okay, it's of basically the same for us on both. Which one's Tyrion. stronger? So strength rank, so let's go to Tyrion here, first, because he's got the higher strength words. rank. He wants it on aggression pact. Actually, we can just go straight to a defensive alliance. Then we can balance this and get a nice chunk of change. Pick up military access as well. There we go. Alright, so now we've got Tyrion on our side. Well. It's another solid trade partner there. Can I offer assistance? That's gonna bring it looks like Tyrannoch and all the rest along as well. What is our I bid you welcome to the court of the Phoenix King. Well thank you. Defensive Alliance, military access, give me the money. A wise course. Excellent. Speak. Let's take on Avalorn is a really high I strength rank welcome. here, so defensive what do alliance. You wish to discuss? Offer proposal. Serving the gods. Awesome. Defender of the Phoenix Throne. I bid you welcome. Illyrian Defensive Alliance. What would you wish to discuss? Access. Give me the money. Very okay. Well. All right. So we just picked up a lot of money. Not and a lot of trade agreements. Talzin would probably like a non-aggression pact. Men. We can steal some money from them too. And then Arguilon wants one. Oh, we picked up a lot of money here. You called? And Torgavon wants one. Athelorin, home of the Oak of Ages. I will do my duty. And then Exodal. I want a non-aggression pack with them, and I'll. Oh, they want way too much money. Yeah, no thanks. We're decreasing with them because of our treaties with the High Elves. Apparently he doesn't like the High Elves, right? Yeah, he's at war with them. Crap. That's not great. Um, and he's strength rank too. So we might want to hurry up and kill the Vampire Coast because we might have an angry lizard to our north. Um, however, I should have the good graces of Gorok here. Bacon. So strategic threat trespasses, yeah. So they're not very, they're not very upset with me. They're pretty happy, in fact, because of what we're doing in terms of prosecuting the war. All right, so we've joined the war My against the Vampire oh, Coast, the and we're gonna take our first settlement off of them to end the episode. So I would say that this was a very productive episode. We got Carcassonne on board. We gained more territory. We can now do some gallivanting around the old world as well as the new world here. We have started a war with Vampirates, which should be productive for us here. Tear those down. Yeah, we got a nice chunk of change over that last turn, and we increased. We should be able to swat down the Pox Marsh and the Awakening, which should pretty quickly put an end to the coast. 
And then we've got our back kind of guarded over here at Chocla, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let's see here. Let's go with, um... Worshippers of the Grail. And let's put a skill point into Life Bloom. Yeah, I'm not planning on moving this stack. But I can, let's see. Really want my defenses to be strong over on this flank, so I'm actually gonna spend the money there. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we can save a little bit of our cash, I think, just to sit on top of things as a just in case. Six. Outpost 20 to 20. Ooh. We got some good lizard units we can pull in, and that allegiance we bought is gonna pay dividends here. Let's... I mean, who needs the archers and we can get something better here? Let's get rid of these peasant archers. You seek me? Fire leech bolas would be really cool for skirmishers. Pretty good against Grom, to be honest. So with the Pterodon riders. If I think, you know, okay, this army's gonna have six infantry. And some chameleon skinks would be amazing here, but we could get um, two units from these guys. Ah, dang. Or no, we can do four units in our army. I wonder if I should pick up some Sara spears instead of the spearmen at arms. And then maybe we just put some more knights in this army. Yeah, we definitely go knight heavy. I don't know, fire leech bolas would be good too. I think I'm going to ditch the two spearmen. I've got three more of these guys coming. I'm going to pick up two Saurus Warrior Spears with shields. That'll be kind of like my anti-large capability. And then as I win some more battles, I should be able to pick up some more units from the Lizards. But that'll make this army significantly stronger, getting rid of those peasants. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll see you all soon with some more action with the Bordelow Errantry Wars.